Day 281. Isaiah 30-31. Woe to the rebellious children, declares the Lord, to those who carry out a plan that is not mine, who form an alliance, but against my will, heaping up sin upon sin. They set out to go down to Egypt without asking my advice, to seek shelter under Pharaoh's protection and take refuge in Egypt's shade. But Pharaoh's protection will become your shame, and the refuge of Egypt's shade your disgrace. For though their princes are at Zoan and their envoys have arrived in Hanes, everyone will be put to shame because of a people useless to them. They cannot be of help, they are good for nothing but shame and reproach. This is the burden against the beasts of the Negev, through a land of hardship and distress, of lioness and lion, of viper and flying serpent. They carry their wealth on the backs of donkeys and their treasures on the humps of camels, to a people of no profit to them. Egypt's help is futile and empty, therefore I have called her Rahab who sits still. Go now, write it on a tablet in their presence and inscribe it on a scroll, it will be for the days to come, a witness forever and ever. These are rebellious people, deceitful children, children unwilling to obey the Lord's instruction. They say to the seers, stop seeing visions. And to the prophets, do not prophesy to us the truth. Speak to us pleasant words, prophesy illusions. Get out of the way, turn off the road. Rid us of the Holy One of Israel. Therefore this is what the Holy One of Israel says, because you have rejected this message, trusting in oppression and relying on deceit, this iniquity of yours is like a breach about to fail, a bulge in a high wall, whose collapse will come suddenly, in an instant. It will break in pieces like a potter's jar, shattered so that no fragment can be found. Not a shard will be found in the dust large enough to scoop the coals from a hearth or to skim the water from a cistern. For the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, has said, by repentance and rest you would be saved, your strength would lie in quiet confidence, but you were not willing. No. You say, we will flee on horses. Therefore you will flee. We will ride swift horses, but your pursuers will be faster. A thousand will flee at the threat of one, at the threat of five you will all flee, until you are left alone like a pole on a mountaintop, like a banner on a hill. Therefore the Lord longs to be gracious to you, therefore he rises to show you compassion, for the Lord is a just God. Blessed are all who wait for him. O people in Zion who dwell in Jerusalem, you will weep no more. He will surely be gracious when you cry for help, when he hears, he will answer you. The Lord will give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, but your teacher will no longer hide himself, with your own eyes you will see him. And whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear this command behind you, this is the way. Walk in it so you will desecrate your silver-plated idols and your gold-plated images. You will throw them away like menstrual cloths, saying to them, Be gone. Then he will send rain for the seed that you have sown in the ground, and the food that comes from your land will be rich and plentiful. On that day your cattle will graze in open pastures. The oxen and donkeys that work the ground will eat salted fodder, winnowed with shovel and pitchfork. And from every high mountain and every raised hill, streams of water will flow in the day of great slaughter, when the towers fall. The light of the moon will be as bright as the sun, and the light of the sun will be seven times brighter, like the light of seven days, on the day that the Lord binds up the brokenness of his people and heals the wounds he has inflicted. Behold, the name of the Lord comes from afar, with burning anger and dense smoke. His lips are full of fury, and his tongue is like a consuming fire. His breath is like a rushing torrent that rises to the neck. He comes to sift the nations in a sieve of destruction, he bridles the jaws of the peoples to lead them astray. You will sing as on the night of a holy festival, and your heart will rejoice like one who walks to the music of a flute, going up to the mountain of the Lord, to the rock of Israel. And the Lord will cause his majestic voice to be heard and his mighty arm to be revealed, striking in angry wrath with a flame of consuming fire, and with cloudburst, storm, and hailstones. For Assyria will be shattered at the voice of the Lord, he will strike them with his scepter. And with every stroke of the rod of punishment that the Lord brings down on them, the tambourines and lyres will sound as he battles with weapons brandished. For Tophet has long been prepared, it has been made ready for the king. Its funeral pyre is deep and wide, with plenty of fire and wood. The breath of the Lord, like a torrent of burning sulfur, sets it ablaze. Woe to those who go down to Egypt for help, who rely on horses, who trust in their abundance of chariots and in their multitude of horsemen. They do not look to the Holy One of Israel, they do not seek the Lord. Yet he too is wise and brings disaster, he does not call back his words. 
he will rise up against the house of the wicked and against the allies of evildoers. But the Egyptians are men, not God, their horses are flesh, not spirit. When the Lord stretches out his hand, the helper will stumble, and the one he helps will fall, both will perish together. For this is what the Lord has said to me, like a lion roaring or a young lion over its prey, and though a band of shepherds is called out against it, it is not terrified by their shouting or subdued by their clamor, so the Lord of hosts will come down to do battle on Mount Zion and its heights. Like birds hovering overhead, so the Lord of hosts will protect Jerusalem. He will shield it and deliver it, he will pass over it and preserve it. Return to the one against whom you have so blatantly rebelled, O children of Israel. For on that day, every one of you will reject the idols of silver and gold that your own hands have sinfully made. Then a Assyria will fall, but not by the sword of man, a sword will devour them, but not one made by mortals. They will flee before the sword, and their young men will be put to forced labor. Their rock will pass away for fear, and their princes will panic at the sight of the battle standard, declares the Lord, whose fire is in Zion, whose furnace is in Jerusalem. Philippians 4. Therefore, my brothers, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, that is how you must stand firm in the Lord, my beloved. I urge Euodia and Syntyche to agree with each other in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, my true yoke fellow, to help these women who have labored with me for the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be apparent to all. The Lord is near. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think on these things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me, or seen in me, put it into practice. And the God of peace will be with you. Now I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I am not saying this out of need, for I have learned to be content regardless of my circumstances. I know how to live humbly, and I know how to abound. I am accustomed to any and every situation, to being filled and being hungry, to having plenty and having need. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Nevertheless, you have done well to share in my affliction. And as you Philippians know, in the early days of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church but you partnered with me in the matter of giving and receiving. For even while I was in Thessalonica, you provided for my needs again and again. Not that I am seeking a gift, but I am looking for the fruit that may be credited to your account. I have all I need and more, now that I have received your gifts from Epaphroditus. They are a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, well pleasing to God. And my God will supply all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet all the saints in Christ Jesus. The brothers who are with me send you greetings. All the saints send you greetings, especially those from the household of Caesar. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit.